Hey, Holman, have you heard? Nope. This truck is owned by our next guest. <laughs> that, my friend, is a 22 Ford F-250 with a Godzilla 7.3, and it is on the ground. And I heard that's not on. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck, because truck rides with truck show we have the lifted we have the lowered and everything in between we'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline the truck show the truck show the truck show whoa, whoa. it's the truck show with your hosts lightning and holman this episode of the Truck Show Podcast, Have You Heard, is proudly presented by Nissan. With the Frontier, Titan, and Titan XD, Nissan has a truck for every need, along with the legendary Nissan durability. Test drive your next truck at a local Nissan dealer today, or point your browser to NissanUSA.com, where you can use the build and price tool to configure a Nissan truck that fits your lifestyle. And when you're thinking about adding power or improving fuel economy, Banks has over 65 years of experience. Whether it's cold air intakes or exhaust systems, tuning, throttle control, charge air cooling, lubrication components, and much more, no one offers smarter, safer, 50-state emissions-compliant performance parts than Gale Banks. You'll find the best engineered parts for your truck at BanksPower.com. And when you're looking for quality, full synthetic lubrication for your truck, Amsoil has you covered with motor oil, lubricants and protectants, grease, additives, and more. Amsoil synthetic lubricants deliver wear protection, engine cleanliness, and fuel efficiency that conventional oils simply can't match. Find out how Amsoil synthetic lubricants can save you money and time by helping your vehicles run better and last longer than with conventional oils at Amsoil.com. When it comes to lubrication, Amsoil is the leader in synthetics. All right, let's track down Mr. Tim Gilbert. He's a member of uh, Negative Camber out there in Florida, and he's in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. His uh, cell reception has been awful, but I think he hauled butt back to the cabin to hop on the phone with us. So if you don't mind, let's dial up Tim Gilbert out of, uh, well, he's currently in North Carolina. Hello? Hey, is this Mr. Tim Gilbert? It's Lightning at Home and Truck Show Podcast. What's happening? It is I. <laughs> now, why do you sound so beaten down? Aren't you in Maggieville at uh, the uh, Mini Truck and Nationals? I am at the Mini Truck Nationals, the Super Bowl of Mini Trucks. He found out that his <clears throat> truck was too giant to be considered a Mini Truck. Well, don't feels, spoil it. Don't he spoil feels it. defeated now. No, 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 no. No one knows what we're talking about yet. Do right. Th- so here's the deal. Tim and I have been speaking for a really long time, which feels like three years. It's probably only about a year or so. Um, when he divulged the news that he would be buying a tw- either 22 or 23 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 liter gas engine, he would be basically gutting it and bagging it and putting it on the ground with a new chassis. I thought, that's kind of wild. You're going to make a full-size truck look like a Mini. And that's exactly what he intended to do. Sent him a couple parts, and he's been, like, leaking me photos, and it looks amazing. And apparently, you just drove this truck after, like, just days of being completed. You drove the truck from Orlando, Florida, where you live, to Maggieville, North Carolina, to Mini Truck Nats. All right. Hold on. Help me out here. What makes it like a mini truck and not just a lower, short, and super duty? A single cab short bed. Okay. Which Ford does not make. Short and wide. So yeah, love I that. had to, yeah, I got a crew cab bed. Because they're shorter, and you when you want to order a single cab, you have to go bed or cabin chassis. So I just got the long bed, so I'd have the tail lights, the the camera, the you know the tailgate, and all that. So I bought a single cab long bed, which is the only way you can. And I bought an XL. I upgraded with the Godzilla motor, the seven three gas, and I got the best stereo I could get, a bigger screen, and just pretty much just it's still a work truck because it's got vinyl everything, vinyl floors and all that. I haven't had a chance to get to that yet that's jimmy builds them really solid and he's a really good builder so he's in high demand so i was on a waiting list so i bought i decided to buy the bed before i even got the truck so you had this done at jimmy's rod and custom where's that and how did you choose them over uh some of the other guys that are known for making crazy custom chassis he, his builds um is i'm not the first one to just jump a- after taking it and go across the country i i just stayed on the on the east coast but um 
there's been several guys that go to go to SEMA after picking it up and guys that go to LST towing another truck after just picking it up. That's their shakedown run. He's close to me too. He's an hour away. He's in Edgewater, Florida, which is, you know, kind of close to Daytona and I'm closer to Orlando. So did you just shorten the frame or is there a different chassis underneath and what did you have to do? It's all new. And that's funny. My dad, that blows his mind that I bought a brand new truck, lifted the body off, took the engine out and threw everything else away. But uh, yeah, he, he builds them out of a, a plate steel. He cuts them on a plasma and then, then welds them all together. So what's the suspension no on that tubing. thing? We ditched the I beams. He takes the factory um, spindle at the end of the I beam and modifies it to take a. Um, I think it's I don't know, it's a fancy ball joint, but it's it's uniball or hyper joint or something like that. I forget what it's called, but but to to really they really flex, um, and he makes it into a you know just a regular control arm setup. So is it his own design? Is it body dropped uh, over the new chassis, or is it just laying frame? No, it's the body is on the ground. Absolutely, um, he he doesn't cut the floor of the truck though. It's a stock, what's called a stock floor body drop, I guess. But the chassis is built for that cab to stay under the cab, and the body still lay on the ground. It's it, no, it, it's sick. You guys got to see it. So, uh, Tim, your Instagram, it, it's short for Negative Camber Florida. But what is it? NC? Which which your which your gram? NC Florida Original. And the reason for that is I I didn't start the club, but me and five guys started the the Florida chapter. And so I'm one of the Florida originals is, is why I did that. But NC Florida original yep, is my Instagram. Gotcha. Now talk us through like the wheel choice, things like that. You're up, you're on at least 22s, right? Oh, those yeah, are they're 26s. Yeah. 26s. Yeah, they're 6s. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. And they talk, man. A lot of guys are putting 30s on them. And a lot of guys are putting 30s on them now and they look killer. My only thing with that is you got to lift it higher to turn and stuff like that on the big trucks. And I like to ride low, but also um, the tire selection. And I plan on driving it. I, I drive it to the shows. This is the first one I've gone to, but I'm going to drive it everywhere. It will not be on the trailer unless it's broken. So what was, okay, so you you have this commission. You have it done. He calls you, says, come pick up the keys. What was your first drive like? And then was there anything you had to do before you got prepped for your road trip? And is this the longest trip you've taken in it so far? Yeah. Um, I, I've only owned the truck. I've only had the truck back a week. I got it back last Saturday. <laughs> we, Damn. When, when we go, no, but I, but it gets better. When we, when we go to Maggie Valley, we stay for the whole week. So I got it back last Saturday, um, took it to the tire store that I bought, that I bought the pressure sensors at. And he, he installed all the tires. They were not put on the truck at that time. So I had to get them all activated so they'd work. So I drove to the tire store and then back home, which is about an hour when, once I got done at the tire store. We, we uh, packed up the truck, everything got ready, and we left the next morning at 5 in the morning to come to Maggie Valley. So I, I had a shakedown of one hour. Oh, my locally. gosh. You know who one of uh, for- Tim's prolific followers are? No, who's that? Dirthead Dave. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. All, all of I'm looking through his feed, and all of them are like, liked by Dirthead Dave. And he's like, sick, cool. Right? So I was like, all right, that's, that's, a, that's a good follow yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a good endorsement right yeah, there. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he's in he's in the club. He's been in the club a long time too. Yeah, and so the the color scheme for those of you that haven't gone to the Instagram yet is it's an all white truck, except for all the chassis work is lime. Is it lime green? No, it's not lime green. It's like a day glow it's like green. Like Kawasaki green. Or yeah, something. no, Kawasaki green is deeper. This is like day glow, like like a, a, a like a, a safety vest antifreeze, green, like an antifreeze green is the way I describe it. The color on the wheels is different from the chassis though because. That color is an illusion color from Prismatic. It's called Shocker Yellow, but it tur- when it turns out, it looks green to me. But th- And I chose it for that because I love lime green. But the one on the chassis is as close as I could get it in a single stage because illusion colors, you have to base in chrome. And my powder coater didn't th- doesn't want to didn't want to do that because she didn't feel it would it would stick and it would also look like a different color, being that it wasn't a uh, based in a brush like the wheels are, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah, gotcha. Looking at the chassis right now, you've got uh, some photos of it. it. Looks pretty badass. Or do you like the uh, the Banks rear diff cover on there, Holman? I've always oh, liked that, the that thing is <laughs> that's, it's so, like, but that that's has to be like the jewelry. worst marketing it's, move lightning's ever awful. made because you can never see nobody ever knows it's honestly back there. no here's the thing is that no no one will ever see it you know because i don't you don't have a do you have a panel that comes up in the middle of the bed so you can you can put that in his free product there, uh contract make no. make banks uh, part visible through plexiglass sight window <laughs> in bed 
No, it's on the back window, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't do it for and that. I tell, I, and I tell everybody about it. <laughs> I just did it because I thought it was super cool. And it's like one of those hidden kind of like uh, Easter eggs, you know, under the truck. Oh, it's hidden. Yeah, it's definitely hidden. It's got all kinds of cross members in front of you. You can't see the logo, but it's going under there. Hey, Tim, take us through the well, hold, hold on. engine. I, I, and Whoa, what, I, we, I want to find out how it rode on his road trip. Like, what, what that was about. Okay. Because he had it for a week. I'm, I'm curious. You, you hit the highway and you're... Up to 70 miles an hour, 75, you realize your one wheel uh, shot all the wheel weights off of it, and uh, now it feels like you're rolling on eggs, and then the uh, the drive shaft was too long, so it plunged into itself and exploded and, and took the bed off with it. Any carnage, or was it just like dead nuts perfect the first one? All lies. None of, none of that happened. All lies. No, it, it rode like it was on air. It's awesome, man. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Whose air system is it? AccuAir, or what are you running? AccuAir is the is the uh, air management, Vi Air for compressors. Okay. And then I think the bags are airlift. That's what that's what Jimmy likes. He's used several of them, and that's the one he likes the best, especially on the bigger trucks. Oh my God! That you've just got like Vi Air works with everybody, but I can't. How dare you put airlift and AccuAir together like two competitors on the same build? Oil well, and water. I don't think AccuAir makes bags themselves. No, so. they don't. Right. But we could have gone with Slams. Uh, he's used those before, but for the bigger trucks. I, I think the 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 bag sidewall is a little stiffer, and it, it seems to work better. Now, in do you, his did he do um did he do hard lines or is it all soft line? No, everything is stainless steel hard lines. Great, yeah, because when you're carrying that much weight, you don't want something to fail. Um, and he wants, yeah, he he runs a minimum amount of um, connections, um, like you know, just because it's more leak points. How does he get the engine? Like, where does he have to reposition the engine in order to slam the truck that far? Because typically with that 7.3, it's it's out the bottom un, between the frame rails, right? I mean, so you'd, well, you'd lay, you gotta, the, you'd lay yeah. the engine out on the ground. But you got to remember, he's doing a different chassis, number one. And number two, they have the engine rides higher in the chassis, the stock chassis anyway, because there's a solid axle. It needs up travel. Oh, it's same with yeah, the I-beam. So, solid axle. So I think you can drop the engine in the new one. And still fit it under the hood and not scrape the ground because you're not worried about up travel with the A arms, right, Tim? The engine does sit higher in there, and and I, eventually I wanted to put a supercharger on it, but I don't know if we'll be able to do that without redoing the cowl a little bit. But that may be a possibility. But it does sit a little bit higher because the the thing that hung that was in the way was not the motor so much as that big uh, ten speed. Yeah, oh, that thing's yeah. massive. Get, get high enough. The floor hasn't been touched, but he had to raise the uh, the tunnel. Uh, I think five inches is what he told me. That's a huge tunnel. The transmission tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. God, the 10-speed. Yeah, that's a, it's a big boy under there. And, and so, I have the bench seat that's the 40-20-40, uh, and we were able to keep all that because I wanted the option to, to be able to sit three across if I wanted to. That's awesome. Total there's traditional not, like dude, dude, there's not enough bench seats in the world. No. There's just literally like there's the... I love a good bench seat in a regular cab truck. It's so funny that he's keeping God it real. Like he could do absolutely. it all so like super modern. But there's just touches that are like, nope, I'm keeping this old school. It's the modern tech, but it's the old school feel. It's this interesting thing he's trying to pull off. The vibes, vibes, for sure. So what about all the wiring and all that stuff? Like pulling it off the chassis, it's got plastic tabs that hold it in everywhere. And then you've got, like, it had to be a rat's nest coming off and then putting it back in. Like, that had to just be a challenge. Funny you say rat's nest. (laughs) (laughs) I actually... Waiting, waiting for the um, we have we have storms in uh, in in, uh, in Central Florida, you know, hurricanes and whatnot. So one of the hurricanes came through while I was waiting my turn. I had the, I just had the truck. I bought it in twenty one. It's a twenty two, and uh, and he didn't take it in until October uh, last year and twenty three to actually bring the truck in. So anyways, um, it wasn't rats, but squirrels got in and ate my wiring harness no. in my brand new truck. So oh. that that's a big problem. A oh, yeah, yeah. Man. That, so that's and a big problem. A long bed, I couldn't fit it in my garage. Exactly. Exactly. So I talked to Jimmy. I took it to Ford, not knowing what the problem was. And they're like, uh, we can't cover this. Uh, there's a nest in here. So it was, it was not covered under warranty. So oh, they wanted two sucks. grand to put a new wiring harness. Jimmy has to go through it and, and stretch it anyway. So he's like, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. We're going to have to, it still ran, but it had a miss. So I went through and tried to butt connect and I got, it had two misses. A brand new truck. So I, I, I got it better where it run. And uh, I bought a new harness from Ford um, and, and then took it up there. And they used, they put a new harness in it, but they had to extend it anyway. So anyway, all that's taken care of. But they, they build a whole new wiring harness. 
and put it, they usually will stretch and, and redo the factory stuff. Gotcha. Is what they do. Uh, just put it in so all new loom. much yeah. work. It's just so much work to do this to a truck. I love it. The end product is freaking stunning. It just, I've never owned a lower truck before, but I've said it a hundred times on this podcast. Someday I'm going to have a bag truck. I know we, I, I almost had one almost and I it. screwed it up with lockjaw, uh, but just, uh, yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know you told me so a hundred uh, times. Yeah, I know. Yes, All you right. did. Yep. You did. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get it. One, but, one of the cool things about this show that I'm at in Maggie Valley is the, the little town lets you cruise. The police supervise it and they let you drag and do everything. Like I'm not dragging this truck, but I do ride low like an inch off the ground. And I just, I was just filmed by grinder TV. I don't know if you knew who that is. Yeah. Ryan good. He's, he's yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause coming out of the show, we have to make a right. So, I mean, I was obligated to air it out and show everybody, you know what I'm saying? And how then does I it, had to go back. How does it turn the other way. when you're, when you're aired out, how does it turn? I cannot turn, but I can change lanes. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. The 26 is just so big. It's up in there. And, uh, but I can change lanes and, and, and no problem. Do you have some uh, sort of reverse curb feelers inside your fenders so that they start making noise against your tire before you blow your fenders completely off by turning well, with the truck slam? Yeah, well, what he does with that a lot of people, other people don't do is he put an inner fender wall and it attaches to the lip of, of, of the factory fender and all that, the, well, the... the, the the F-250 is, is aluminum. And so his inner fender that bolts in, he made that out of steel. And it's all um, bedlined. So if you touch that, I mean, you have to really want to rip the fender off to really... To, if you're listening, you'll hear it touch that first. You know what I mean? Smart. So the tire's going to touch first and not the wheel, not not the rim. Because that would be catastrophic. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. But it's not going to rip the fender off. Like if you had that little edge on the f- a fender only, you know, you, you could take the fender with it or cut a tire. This is all... I mean, I, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but the way it meets on the outside, there's that on the inside, and then they're then they're uh, attached together. With yeah, screws, so, it, so it's, it's got an inner liner, but it's rolled like you would with like a uh, a European sports car it, or something. Yeah, you roll that. Correct. Lip, so it's, it's rolled. Nice it's rolled to the aluminum fender. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. So it took a couple years, like what a year and a half, to get this thing done. Two years to complete the build. Yeah. Well, including waiting, but I, I just dropped it off in October, so so really oh. six months in the shop. Oh, okay. It's just okay. a waiting list, really. I bought the truck ahead of time because you know we had that thing where the, where we couldn't get those things and everything was you know the um, oh the pandemic was in short supply. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 that thing. So, so the then, thing of which we will not mention, <laughs> lightning, thing, right? We dare not right. speak its name, That's right? Yeah. I don't want you to necessarily tell us what you paid, but I. I'm dying. But he to wants know. to know how much it costs. Well, I do not want to know <laughs> that if I if I bought a let's say I could afford a used F-150 or I, I wouldn't do a 250 because that's your thing. I don't want to step on your toes. But if I got like an F-150 or something like that, what do you think a ballpark is for a new chassis to lay it out beautifully like you did, where it's an actual it could be a daily driver for me? I could have bought your um your TRX for sure. And then Ouch. how many other cars also? <laughs> and, I, and I and I have no interior and I'm done. But I, I ain't mad. I wouldn't trade it for a Corvette. So it's all good. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it's cool. It's going to get more looks than my TRX. I'll tell you that for damn sure. All right. So uh, enough about uh, your super rad slam super duty where lightning is trembling with uh, jealousy over here. Uh, we have to know about the mini truck nats. What, like what? What's the show like this year? What's out there? What are you seeing? What are the trends that are happening? Because we haven't, you know, we always joke that everybody who's on the show somehow touched mini trucks at some point in their automotive life, career, you know, hobby, whatever. We haven't talked about it in a while. So, what's happening in the world of mini trucks? Well, this is my first full size, so I've all done done all mini trucks until this one, as far as full custom, but. Yeah, I mean they're still out there. They're still we, they still bring them out. Uh, they come out of the woodwork for for mini nats. People debut here, and I was lucky enough to get. I I tried to debut at LST, you know whatever, and it wasn't done. I was just like I, the chips fall where they may. When it's done, it's done, you know. And so this is where it, it ended up. They don't let a whole lot of full sizes in there, but mine was chosen on a, on a rendering. Luckily, wow. the guy that puts on the show that's Tracy rare. There it's it's invitation only. Well, not invitation only, but you submit. And then they choose you because they ha- they only have 750. I think he could easily put double that in there if they had the space. But 750 is the number that they have, and so so they they have to pick pick and choose. But there's way more than that that come here and cruise, and that's what it's that's almost better than the show. The show's great. He does a great job, but 
like I said, the town supports it. And when you go into the restaurants and stuff, they're like, we're glad you're here and everything. It's just, it's just awesome. I tried to get Jay to come. <laughs> I was telling him, but he's, I think he had other, too many other conflicts, but it'd be cool for you guys to, to come out to it one time. I think it'd be awesome. And I went to show fest back in the day. I went to Texas. Heat <laughs> back in the day. I've been to a lot of good shows. Oh man. The memory. This is, this is the Super Bowl, in nope. my opinion. So I that- mean, he waved back in the day. Was epic well, and Showfest. But well, hold on a second. Was uh, un. I know Showfest. So there was a lot of TNA that happened back in those days, I'm, right? It was this is more family that. friendly. I'm not. We're all I'm, grown I'm up now. now, so this is yeah. definitely more. This is definitely more family friendly. But I, at the, as far as the cruising back then, they used to let you drag and everything at Showfest, and that was the that was the cool part about that. Until, so until they shut it shut it down at a certain point. But here they just let you do it all night if you want. The only thing they don't like is burnouts. And uh, standing in the middle of the street taking pictures, you got to stand on the side. They made a few rules because of the, all the takeover stuff, I guess, this yeah, year. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't That's really noticed the difference, to be honest. They were reasonable. Whatever they said was reasonable. And they still let you drag. That's just, just the burnout thing. But So one of the questions I think that Holman had that I do as well, and that's, what is the state of mini trucking today? And not at the mini truck Nats. And, and thank you for bringing us up to speed on that event. But like... How many guys are doing what you're doing, both on the, you've done it kind of at the highest level, right? The only thing above you is taking like a brand new Duramax or something and slamming that out. You know, now you're like 200 grand or something, oh. I would assume, right? Yeah, there's yeah, there's guys doing that for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. We've seen, you know, from Fat Fabs and his builds are all big, big bucks, right? But is there another generation that we're not seeing that are taking Nissans, Toyotas, new ones, and making the modern mini trucks, or is it? Is there only, such a thing as a modern mini truck, or, or is it only yesteryear? I've seen several Mavericks out here, but a buddy of mine, Scott, has a, a Maverick that's all-wheel drive that's bagged. He didn't bring it here because he's he has so many mini trucks he has to choose because he has quite a few mini trucks, so he didn't bring that here. But he he has a Mazda with an LS in it, and his wife has a, um, a Geo Tracker that's on. Uh, bagged on 20s and, you know, <laughs> geotrackers. geotrackers are rad i don't care i don't care who you are to, 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 to yeah, they're 20 inch race lines yeah it's bitching rock on people <laughs> that's hilarious is it a bunch of guys that are our age just like rekindling the past reliving the past or are you there's, seeing do you think there will be because look you could take a brand new there frontier? generation coming up behind you yeah there are there are some, but it looks like to me that they're going for the older stuff and trying to trying to find find the older stuff and still still build true mini trucks. You know, I don't I don't think they've warmed up to the plus plus even a Mavericks twenty five grand and you know the the base base base. Yeah, they raised it five the, five thousand now. Right, the hybrid one is now the premium one. They flip flopped it. Yeah, but yeah, it's expensive. I kind of dig them, but you know, whatever. But uh, I don't think the young people are into it yet. Just I think more, more the cost, the in- cost of entry. Because when I got into it, that's because why I got into it is because it was cheap. I was in high school, and I, I had a Nissan Hardbody. That was my first one. My mom co-signed, and I bought a brand new one. Damn! And it cost you what, like sixty nine hundred bucks or something like six that? Six grand, seven grand? No, nah, I think it was eighty two fifty, if I remember right. All right, the payment okay. was one one eighty eight. Oh, that was a nice one. <laughs> and this was a 90 so at that time they came with carpet still crank windows and like i said just ac is really the only option i got but uh yeah that was a fun one my, i told my my mom i was going to get a sunroof put in it and i and i took it to my buddy's shop and had a target top cut in it oh no <laughs> oh, that's not oh, a sunroof God. oh <laughs> i bet she was real happy after co-signing that loan <laughs> yeah no she was not <laughs> As it turns out, that's uh, that's not factual or accurate. Where is that no. hard body today? Uh, long gone. You mean long you, have, you have no idea I, who has it? I went, it went through several iterations. When I first did it in high school, it was just static as low as he could, ripping reflectors off and that type of thing. Uh, then I decided it would be a nice idea to put hydraulics on it. And this this was still my only transportation. <laughs> but, um, oh, man. And then uh, then after that, I still owned that. When the, when the hydraulics seemed less practical, I bought an Astro van. And then I, that was just static. And that's what I got in camera with. Painted it uh, Banana Pearl. And then I did a to- Turbo Toyota uh, that was body dropped. At that time, we, you did you cut the floor. So I did a, a four-inch body drop on that. It was ridiculous with uh, no headroom. But that one I put a rag top in. A few years ago, I, I, I was ha- feeling nostalgic for that, that same Toyota that I never finished. So I bought uh, another one. It was not turbo because those are very hard to find, but it was the same truck, only long bed. I'm not I'm too keen on long beds generally, but uh, the extra cab long bed didn't look too bad. 
And uh, so I went with it. And then that one I body dropped, but left it static. So I had 17 inch Budnick's uh, switch blades on it. And it would, it, it, we narrowed the suspension enough that I could steer lock to lock with it tucking. Dude, Budnick's were the and wheel so, for a while. <laughs> no, I haven't even heard that. I haven't I heard, heard that name in forever. so long. Yeah. Those in like Renault's and I know Anki's still around, but like yeah. Anki was the thing back I had, then. I had Renault's on Boys. it first because when I was in high school, the Renault R9 was the wheel I lusted after. Sure. So I had those on it first. And then I saw on Craigslist, believe it or not, or maybe it was Marketplace probably at that time, a set of uh, a set of Budnick switchblades. And Budnick does not reproduce the the classics, at least at that time they didn't. So I, I ran them that, the way they – I had them re-drilled because they were drilled for an Astro and it had a center cap. So I could dual drill it and you wouldn't see it. And uh, then I ran them for that. They were on an Astro, so the offset was a little deeper than I would have liked. So eventually I ended up sending them out to uh, Chris Coddington, and he regrouped uh, the Budnicks. He, he'll, he doesn't care. He'll do whatever wheel, and, and he made them more positive. And I narrowed them uh, to seven inches. Who just bought uh, Mini Truck and Mag, or what's the magazine that uh, is now getting going? Like they bought the rights to it, and they're, and they're resurfacing the magazine. Yeah, they, they actually debuted the first copy here. I have a subscription, by it, so I haven't gotten mine, but they brought a whole bunch here. And I flipped through it. Um, yeah, Logan has bought has bought that, and they're they're reproducing it. It's it's a subscription only. In the first year, I think it's three issues for twenty five bucks, and it's on really nice paper, really thick. I don't know. It's like a coffee table mag. It's really nice. It's so what, a newspaper. What you got to do like it these days? The, it's, it's it's that's a premium price for a magazine, but I, I still like the magazines. I still like to hold it in my hand and look at it. You know, I don't know. All right. Well, listen. You got uh, is it one more day of Maggie Valley in you? Well, I'm going to go back out there and cruise some more um, tonight. That's what they do. And it'll probably be at midnight. I don't know. I'm old, so I don't know if I'll stay out that long, but <laughs> it's it's a good time. You got the family with you or are you uh, solo? Uh, no, my wife goes everywhere with me. She's my ride or die. She's the one that uh, the reason I can do all this. It's awesome when you have a wife who will let you uh, go after your hobbies and enjoy them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, she's always been that way. Our kids are grown, um, 22 and 24. My My daughter doesn't like car shows too much. And my son would love to be here, but he's working. He, he's in it. He he's twenty four, and he he was building a ranger, but you know he's trying to get out on his own. So every and everything costs money that you want to do a house and all that. All that's up right now. So he's trying, but uh, but yeah, he'll have something cool one day. Do you, do you have friends that are like, you know, hey Tim, are you still in a mini trucks? Like, isn't that a kid thing? Do you ever get any of that pushback? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. like at the high school reunion and people that I went to high school with. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Have you told uh, your daughter yet that she's no longer part of your family? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Tim, get back out to uh, the action. I'm kind of disappointed you were inside in your cabin because it's nice and quiet in there. I was hoping to have you out on the street, like with all the, the hoopla and the <laughs> breaking bot thoughts off the streets and stuff. But uh, you didn't have any. <laughs> when we tried to call, call you earlier, you didn't have any reception. So uh, I appreciate you stepping back into the cabin to get on the phone with us. And um, no, I love it. I've wanted to I talk to, to you every, all the time. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Because, like, you're keeping this alive. And you know, you've heard us talk about this a bunch. Like it all comes back to mini trucking, obviously in this age group, right? It's like it, you either were a mini trucker or your best friend was a mini trucker. Like it just touches everyone. And it's so rad that you're keeping this alive. And, and the new rig is amazing. An F two fifty on the ground. You got to see it. So uh, give us that Instagram one more time. NC Florida original. NC Florida original. Awesome. Dude, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, we really appreciate you uh, listening for all these years. I don't know why you keep doing that, but uh, <laughs> hopefully us having you on was a little bit of a payback. Awesome. I appreciate it. You got it. All right. Keep have fun. We'll all right, talk to you. Thank you. All right. All right later. Later. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. All the money I get from my paycheck, that all goes to my truck, so can't really help it. Right? <laughs> kind of like a disease. Huh? Yeah. yeah.